Hello and welcome to the Tuesday, April 9th, 2024 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from London, England. In today's diary, we got a nice case study by one of our undergraduate interns looking at how the threat hunting team and the security operation teams can work together in order to analyze activity and find potential compromises. In this particular case, I think one of the important lessons to me at least is how important it is to really close the loop when it comes to threat intel, where the threat hunting team looks for the anomalies, finds something, hands it over to security operations team that can then dive in deeper, figure out what exactly happens, and then again, feed that information back to the threat hunt team to hopefully find new and exciting compromises. Well, maybe not that exciting. And also, as in this case, find them in time before any significant damage happens. Interesting little case study. And uh, certainly thanks uh, to Nathaniel Jakuts for contributing uh, this article. And then we have, well, yet again, problems with new top-level domains. This time, it's the plus top-level domain. Someone registered the domain name notepad.plus and is using it now, apparently, to sort of impersonate the website for the famous editor Notepad++. This is currently not obviously malicious. If you're going to notepad.plus, you're going to be redirected to the official Notepad++ website. But uh, that, of course, uh, could change at any time. And it's possible that this initial redirection is really sort of more a confidence builder where uh, the bad actors, if they have in the end bad intention, are going to use traffic that's currently going through their site to either profile visitors, maybe redirect some of these visitors to a malicious site, or maybe just trying to establish some history and with that, then later switch to some kind of malicious mode. The Notepad++ project definitely doesn't like this particular action and is asking for help. Notepad++ being free, it doesn't necessarily have the resources to hire lawyers and try to take legal actions against whoever registered Notepad++. And the people at Wiz.io who have had a decent record in finding vulnerabilities in various cloud providers have now partnered with Hugging Phase, the AI machine learning community platform to find vulnerabilities in Hugging Phase. The main problem that they identified is related to something that I've mentioned before, and that's if you are are using someone else's machine mo learning model, you're often really just importing compiled Python code, a pickle file into your code, so we're executing someone else's code. Now, Hugging Face has this feature called spaces where you can host code like this, and that was vulnerable to some cross-tenant vulnerabilities where you, by running code within a space, could essentially access other users' data. Interesting vulnerability and something I think that many people who are sort of using machine learning models don't quite appreciate. So definitely if you are in this space, take a look at this vulnerability and thanks for hugging face to documenting this issue. And Google announced that its V8 sandbox is now part of Chrome's vulnerability reward program. What makes it sort of significant is that uh, the V8 sandbox has been announced as an experimental feature a couple years ago, but now is mature enough where Google appears confident to allow it sort of more scrutiny by including it in the pay for vulnerabilities program. That's the vulnerability reward program. V8, of course, is Google's JavaScript engine that is included in Google Chrome. According to a quick blog post here, they're stating that 60% of recent vulnerabilities 
in Google Chrome were related to V8 and that many of these vulnerabilities were memory management of vulnerabilities, but nothing that sort of a memory safe language like Rust would have fixed because they're really sort of subtle logic issues. And what the sandbox is supposed to accomplish is to essentially isolate V8 from the rest of the system that a compromise of V8 could not compromise your entire system for remote code execution. Interesting approach, of course, and browsers have long sort of built on top of sandboxing in order to prevent any vulnerabilities being introduced by the browser from affecting the system. This has had sort of a mixed uh, success rate, but certainly has made exploitation of browser vulnerabilities somewhat more difficult. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for listening. Audio quality this week may be a little bit off. It's part of the crappy hotel here. I'm trying sort of with pillow forts and such to do best I can in this room. But uh, sorry for that. Hopefully it'll get better next week. Bye.